Hey, hi everybody. I'm Michelle Birch. I'm the owner of Candle Cocoon, and I'm here today to show you how to make uh, professional quality candles using our professional quality candle kit. So we have our six. These are six ounce containers, and they actually make about a four ounce candle. So in your kit, you're going to get the instructions. You're going to get 12 tins, 12 round tins. Um, three, uh, three cents. You're going to get dies. You're going to get five, six packs of die with three pieces each. Glue dots. Uh, your warning labels. Your test sheet. You can also make copies of this, so you can keep reusing that over and over. Um, three one-pound pre-measured bags of wax. And then, whether or not you order the add-on kit, uh, you might get the pour pot, the double boiler maker, and the thermometer. What you're not going to get is a ladle. And with this kit, the way we have it set up, you really don't need a ladle, and you really don't need a scale. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, this is something that when you do start making your own candles, and it's not all pre-measured, that you're going to want to have. Everything in candle making is done by weight. So we've done all that for you right now. Um, oh, some other things too, your wicks, which are properly sized. And so you'll notice here we have the size on it, and in this case, the name of the scent that it's going to go with. And so each scent has a different size wick that it's going to need in this case. And then also we have these wonderful craft sticks and rubber bands and a biodegradable straw. So, and you'll see what these are for later. So that is what you should have in your kit. I think I have everything on there. And so we're just gonna get right into making this. Uh, this is kind of an on the fly video. We just decided to put this together and this is real circumstances in our, in our real uh, candle making area. And we just want to help you all out making your, your candles. So what you're first gonna do is you're going to, if you have the double boiler maker, this, we got this from Goodwill. Um, you know, we've obviously used it before. We're, we're not going to open the new products to show you all that, but you're, what you're getting is the same thing. And so you're going to place your double boiler maker in there, and then you're going to fill the water up to about there, and then you're going to be able to set your pot on it, like that. And so this would be on your stove. And so what this does is it, cause, it, it makes it so that the pot is not directly touching anything. Um, wax can ignite above 300 and some degrees, and so you don't want direct heat sources touching at all. And so with the double boiler maker, it makes it impossible for this to get above 212 degrees. Uh, what we use in our, in our trade are the Presto Kitchen Kettles or um, the Options Pot. We do not use the Fry Daddy. Basically it has this adjustable mechanism. Once we figure out what the actual temperature is, we don't touch this anymore. We plug it and unplug it doing that, and we don't mess with that because it is a little little touchy. Um, but for this, most of you will have your double boiler system. This is something that you could get later on if you decide to go on in candle making. Um, so we've got that, and you know, we pretend like this is on the stove, and we've got our wax in there. And so to start out candle making, you would take one of your bags of wax. This is a full pound. And we just pour it in there. Get it all out. And you would let that melt. And then you're going to make sure that it, the temperature gets up to about 180 to 190. It needs to get that hot. If it doesn't get that hot, the scent will not bind correctly. You could create a fire hazard, and your your the candle would look like it's um, what bleeding. It like little perspiration drops. Um, it could also look like that too if direct sun is hitting it for too long and it could like leach the, the scent back out of it. But again, you need to get the temperature of the wax up to 180, 190. Um, you can put the scent in when it starts to fall again, but it needs to get up that hot. And, and again, the reason is, is that wax is in a crystalline structure. It is held together tightly in little crystals. And when you heat it up enough, it pulls apart and allows the scent to join into the matrix of the wax. And as it closes back up then, it'll hold your scent in until it's heated, and then it lets the scent out properly. 
So that's kind of a the story behind that. So I've got this over here, just keeping it warm. And again, you want to make sure that it's at 180 to 190. And this is our melted wax. So you're going to take your wax, it's all nice and melty. And we're going to do the brood jasmine. I'm going to show you how to do that. And so you're going to take your wick, which is labeled, in this case, brood jasmine. You're going to have whatever scent you're doing. Um, and we're going to take these off. And then you're going to take your straw. And this helps to stabilize the wick when you're setting it. You're going to have the wick tab. And then your glue dots. And you're going to place. Push hard. And then peel off the glue dot. So you get the glue dot on there, and you center it right about the middle. Push down hard because the glue dots are pressure sensitive. Pull it out, and, and cut. Give a little bit extra, cut. You should have plenty of wick to do all four. And then you're going to have your wick tabs. There are other ways to do this. Um, this is just the way that we've chosen. It's a profession, it, it is professional quality and it works and it's easy. If you have a glue gun with high temperature milk glue, you can use that as well. This can see. There are, and there are, when you're doing this a lot, there are pre-measured wicks um, that are pre-tabbed which costs a little bit more then because of that. So. Real life, we lose things, we set them down. <laughs> when they're right in front of you, especially when they're right in front of you. Yeah, and they can bend a little bit too, that doesn't matter. It's not going to do anything. Okay. And again, this is, this just makes it more stable. If you're trying to put it in, like you're going to, it's going to just bend. And you're not going to get that nice pressure seal. I can push down pretty hard with that. Okay. Save your straw for your next batch, and you can save the rest of your wick too. You can always reuse this. So I just put a little bit of wick on it, and now I have the CD12, and it's ready to go. All right. So then the next part, we're going to get these totally ready. You're going to take two of your craft sticks and a rubber band. And you're simply going to wind and round. This is going to be a wick holder. There, mar there are more expensive wick holders that you can use. Um, and if you're going to do this professionally, I do suggest that you invest in some metal ones. Uh, if these break down over time, the rubber is going to give out. Um, but for now, this is perfect and cheap and easy. Because who knows if you'll even like candle making. But of course you're going to love it. So yeah, then you just put those through like that. Give a little tug. So why do you need to hold that wick? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so your wick needs to be held in place so that it doesn't slide around. You don't want the wick to touch the sides of the container. That would make a hot spot. And that could um, cause something to burn if it's touching something else. And so while you're making it too, if your wick, when you pour your wax, gets all wonky, um, the wick will actually expand when it gets heated. 
and it's going to get slack. You're going to see us, we're going to have to tighten these later on. And if your wick is going back and forth while it's burning, it's not going to create a very good candle. These are a little harder to work with than, eh, I made it wonky, than um, the metal ones. And like I said, there's plenty of wick, so you can give it a little more, <laughs> which I did not do, obviously. All right, so we've got these. These are ready to go. We do not need to preheat the metal when we're pouring our candles in. If we were using glass, we would want to take the heat gun and warm them up a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to get jump lines forming from when the, when the warm wax touches the cold sides. But again, you don't see through these, so it really doesn't matter. So it's a step we can save. What if you don't have a heat gun? If you don't have a heat gun, then you can put them in the oven on low uh, and then pull them out and pour right away. Um, otherwise, a blow dryer can, can do it too, but you might be sitting there for a while with a blow dryer. And you don't ever want to put a blow dryer or a heat gun straight up and down because the heat will go down and bounce right back and hit it. You always want to do it on a, like a 45 degree angle or so, or a 90 degree angle. Um, so it bounces away and doesn't wreck your machine. Okay. So now we have our one pound of melted wax. And again, this is our double boiler, really. And then we're gonna take our brewed jasmine, which is pre-measured. And we're gonna add all of that. And again, let the drips come out. There's a lot of cling, and you wanna try to get as much out as you can. See, so look at it, just keeps dripping and dripping and dripping. That's all good scent, you don't wanna waste that. If you're wasting all that, um, your scent isn't, your, your candle isn't going to be properly scented. We did give a little bit extra to allow, to allow for some of that cling, but try to get it all out. This is a concentrated scent, so there's not junk in it. There's no phthalates, there's no extra fillers. You are getting good, qual high quality scent doing this, so you don't, adding extra is not going to give you a stronger scent. Um, because it's as strong as it can get for this particular scent. There, it, there's what's called a, a scent threshold. I write about this on my blog. And that a scent, when it's really concentrated like this, you're going to get to a cer certain point and it's not going to get any stronger no matter how much more you keep adding. With weaker scents that are not as concentrated, you're going to notice that I added an ounce, but I can still add more. And now I've added two ounces and it's still getting stronger. Wait, I can actually add three ounces of scent and it just got stronger. That means that the scent has been cut either at the manufacturer or at the distributor. And we don't, we don't do that. When we test, we make sure that our scents are as absolutely strong as possible um, and using the least amount possible. It's like high energy laundry detergent. If you use too much, you actually wreck your machine. Um, with this, if you use too much, you're just wasting your, your money. And some of the scents actually bind up and you get right. less scent. That is true too. Like if you add too much scent, uh, usually with the solvents and the fillers that are used, they end up binding the scent into the wax, and you could add like three ounces of scent, and it, all of a sudden it, it doesn't come out. It's like glommed together. All right, so there's that. And then we're gonna use the Wild Indigo Dusty Wing, our little flutter dies. And so I'm gonna do two per pound. Oh, I should probably show you a little flutter die. What the, what the little flutter dies look like. This is our own creation. We actually create these. And a portion of the profits goes to endangered butterfly habitat. They don't have um, the extra residue that some candle dyes will have. And they're easy to work with. And they're just really cute. Okay, so now our die is in there. And that is melting. And our scent is in there too. So now this is the trick. You need to swirl your scent for about two minutes. This is the technique that I use. It's a hand swirl. I don't use a wooden spoon and I certainly don't use a whisk. Uh, a whisk will incorporate, incorporate way too much air into your mixture, which will cause your candle to burn differently. And also when a whisk hits the scent, 
what's going on is it, it causes the, the scent to break apart and go back together, break apart and go back together. It doesn't really mix it as well. So what you want to do, oops, is not squirt everybody. Especially not the camera. The rest of us, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and so you you got to get this big slosh going on. So if I'm not holding it way out in front of me, I'm not sloshing it either. So <laughs> yeah, much more control. <laughs> And you're ambidextrous, so you could go back and forth. <laughs> I'm talented. That's <laughs> my special skill. So, yes, we do this for two minutes. And I'm, I'm going to stop it because I think you can see already that the, the dye is gone. And All incorporated. Yes. Yes, obviously it's not gone. It's in there. And then the scent, sometimes you can still see the scent oils when they're not incorporated properly. Um, and it looks like it's just separate, but like this is already looking pretty good. So we want to keep going with this. And again, the this was at 180 to 190. The scent is dropping while we're doing this. Not a big deal. In fact, if we had if we had gotten the temperature up again to 180, 190, and added the scent at 150, that's fine too. So we just do this. And normally I have a timer on, and and we do this for two minutes. What? Stopping it? Okay. I did want to talk a little bit about color creation. You do get six different colors, um, three primaries, the red, the blue, and the yellow. And then we also give you a brown and a black, which can help you darken it up. And then we give you a purple, because everybody likes purple. Um, or a lot of people like purple, I shouldn't say everybody. So feel free to mix and match. One is going to give you a, a real light color, two is going to give you a medium, and three is going to give you a darker color. And you can't even go darker than three. Um, you can go up to, I think it's like 17 per pound. I don't think that it necessarily gives you, doesn't make a difference after like three or four. Um, but yeah, adding a little black or a little brown is going to um, give you more of like a, a dirty effect. Um, Natural, yeah, earthy. Yeah, like if you, have, if you want to do, you know, blue and yellow and get green and then all of a sudden you want to sage green, you would add a little black or brown. And so it gives you some, some fun, like teal is like black and blue. Um, don't use as much. You can always add more. Oh, should I show you how to, to if you want to look and see what your color is going to look like. So you pour it on an area that is that you're not going to ruin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can pour it on a cookie sheet or, or something. Um, or a little piece of parchment paper. Yeah. I should also talk about how to set up your candle making area. We'll go back and do that again and add it back in. Um, but yeah, so we would let that cool for about two minutes um, or more, depending on how warm it is. And then you'll actually be able to see what it is. So if you're concerned about your color, that's a really good, easy way to test it. Just a little, little blob of it. A little dollop, it'll harden. Yeah. And then you can always add that back into your wax too. But since we're not really worried about color, we're going to move on. So basically, we have your scent and your wax and your color all ready to go and then you're going to pour. Since you're not working with a scale, you're just going to pour directly in here and just do it about even amounts. If you were working with a scale, you could measure out your four ounces. And so with this, it's just about right below the line is about four ounces. And that looks nice in your containers. And that is how to pour your candles. And so we'll come back in a little bit when these are cool and we'll show you how to finish them off. Hi, I'm Michelle Birch. I'm with Candle Cocoon and we're here today to show you how to make a candle. Uh, before you start any candle making project, you want to make sure that your candle making area is ready to go. You don't want to, to ruin your kitchen. And so obviously here we have, this is all candle safe so we don't have to put anything down. Uh, but when you when you want to make a candle, you need to have at least like a three by three area. That's like the minimum that you're going to be able to work freely in, and you're going to want to cover it with butcher block paper, not wax paper, not printed newspaper, because uh, wax paper is going to get wax on the surfaces, and 
and uh, printed paper, the print will actually adhere to any of the surfaces that you're using. And while you may be able to get it up, sometimes you might not. So you would put that down and then, um, then you're pretty much ready to go. Okay, and one other thing while these are setting up, you'll notice that the wicks have gotten quite wiggly and you want to carefully take a pliers, or some people can use their fingers, I find this much easier, and very gently just raise it up a little bit. You don't want to pull it back out of the tab, but you do want to get rid of that slack. Again, it just creates a better quality candle. <laughs> and then, oh, over here, this is the, the color that we put down before, and you can see how that's changed. Yeah. And yep, and like we've done this, and then you could just throw it back in your candle. Okay, and now it just fell down. So, that's the <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, well, we are back again. It's been about an hour. And our candles are looking pretty cool. So they are ready to clip. So simply take off the sticks. Those can be reused. And clip. This is our handy little whip clipper. This is pretty neat actually. It doesn't let you cut less than a quarter of an inch so you can never make your wicks too short. Um, but you can just use a regular scissors too. But yep, these are looking almost perfect. Um, don't expect yours to look this perfect. Soy wax is kind of strange, and a lot of times it can be bumpy and strange looking. Uh, you can even it out with your hair dryer, and yeah, like I said, this this doesn't usually happen. It doesn't look this perfect. But yeah, and they all did. Yeah, they really do. Uh, and again, any given day, you just never know what soy wax is going to look like. You didn't fail if the tops look weird. Uh, so take this. Ta-da! Look, a lid. Put a lid on there. And then you always want to have your safety instructions right on the bottom like that. And you're ready to go. Uh, before you actually burn this, you want to give it two days to cure. That means all of the materials are going to meld together nicely and you're going to get the best scent throw and the best wicking. So hope you enjoyed this and hope your candle making goes well. If you have any questions, uh, let us know at customer at candlecocoon.com. And thanks. Hi again. I just wanted to tell everybody a little bit about a test sheet that we've included with your kit. Uh, if you are professionally making candles, you always want to have information on how your candles burn for each and every candle. Uh, that way, if anyone ever has a question, you can go back and you can look and you can see, oh, that candle burned like this. Uh, but testing, what does that mean? What are you looking for? So some of the things that you're going to include are the type of candle that you're doing. In this case, it was a six ounce round tin. The scent that we're using is brewed jasmine by Candle Cocoon. The amount per pound is 0.8 ounces per pound. Here, we're just doing a solid color, so we use the Wild Indigo Dusty Wing, and we use two flutter dyes per pound. Um, if you're doing other things on a regular basis, you can make notes on, on what you're doing, what how you're using this test sheet. On our other candles in our store, we actually put a streak of color through them, and so that's why that other information is there. You want to keep track of the room temperature, because this can change. If the weather, how is the weather? Is it rainy? Is it... If it's just normal, you really don't need to make a note of that. Um, but if, if it's a high barometric system, like different things can cause your candles uh, to behave differently. The date, of course, because you need to give at least two days, 48 hours of, of cure time. And the wax temp that you, that you raise the wax up to when you're, when you're working. And then, as this goes on, um, we only have the one wick in your kit, but if you were to test other wicks, you would write that in here and you would keep track of it as you go. And then as you test, you would write the date and the time that you start and the time you would end. And then you would take notes on what's happening with your candle. We are actually creating a kit on how to test where we would go over in detail what you're looking for when you're testing. Uh, we also have another video on the website uh, on how to test burn a candle. What are you looking for when you're test burning? 
And again, when you are professionally making candles, you want to know how your candles are gonna, going to burn and you want to be able to replicate the same candles over and over and over again so that you can be assured of getting top quality. So thanks again and we look forward to hearing from you.